The Lord be with you. And also with you. I welcome you all very warmly to St. John's World's End on this, the second Sunday of Easter. Those of us who are in church, those of you who are looking in online at home, wherever you may be. In this service, we continue our celebration of Easter. And also, of course, very much we give thanks for the life and service of the Duke of Edinburgh and pray for all who mourn him. So we say together the prayer of preparation. For those of you who are looking in online, I'm sorry that this week the words aren't on the screen, but join in as best as you can with us, and I'm sure you will. So we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you, from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for today. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We hear the first of our readings, which Pauline will read for. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power the Apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord.
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So, when the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord, he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit down. That is one of the first, that Gospel is one of the first resurrection appearances of Jesus to the disciples. It was the first day of the week, and as we heard at the beginning of the reading, the doors were locked for fear of the Jews. These frightened group of people, and not surprisingly frightened after everything had happened to Jesus. And then Jesus appears, and his first words to them are, Peace be with you. Now, that gospel was written down, all the gospels are written down, about 30 or 40 years after the actual event. Uh, although the stories of Jesus' life and resurrection have been circulating in various forms ever since his death and resurrection. So it's not necessarily an absolutely accurate historical record. But the writer is clearly of the gospel, is clearly wanting to get across the essence of what happened. And you might have thought, perhaps, human beings being what they are, that when Jesus appeared to them, he might have said to them, I told you I'd come back, I told you I'd rise, you all deserted me. None of that at all. Peace be with you. Reconciliation and love and going forward, commissioning them. And that's the essence of the Christian gospel. But Thomas, and from this gospel, he gets the name, the, the nickname really, of Doubting Thomas, uh, was not there. And he said to them, well, you've just heard it in the gospel, unless I put my finger in his hands and my hand in his side, where the spear had pierced Jesus, I will not believe. A week later, Jesus appears again, and the gospel specifically says, although the doors were shut. And, and what that says to us is this, that Jesus 
his resurrection body looked the same as his body before he died, but it was somehow different. He could appear and disappear through locked doors. So although the doors were shut, Jesus uh, appears. Thomas is there. Jesus invites him, says, come and put your finger in your hand. Thomas says, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus' wonderful reply, have you believed blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe? And that's us, all of us, Christians throughout the world. So in itself, it's, it's a wonderful gospel and there's a wonderful message in it for us. First of all, of Jesus' resurrection and commissioning those disciples and perhaps most of all, his first words, peace be with you. No saying to them, you let me down. Well, they did. We all let God down at times. But God reaches out to us, put us on our way again. So as I say, it's a wonderful gospel. But of course we heard the news on Friday that the Duke of Edinburgh had died. And as I thought about today's gospel and about the Duke, and I'm sure we've all been thinking about him and the royal family, a connection occurred. And it's this, that as we've heard in that gospel, Thomas spoke his mind. Uh, he, he might have said, oh, well, you all believe, but mm, I'm not sure. But he told us, I will not believe until I put my hands in his side. And in an, another part of St. John's Gospel, a bit earlier, Thomas spoke his mind again. This is when Jesus was talking to the disciples, not long before his death, and saying to them, it's a reading I'm sure you've heard, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And Jesus goes on to say to them, I'm leaving you, you know the, pl you know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas had the courage to say to him what I'm sure they all wanted to say. Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And it produced a wonderful reply from Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, Thomas could speak his mind, and so could the Duke of Edinburgh. And it got him into trouble at times, didn't it? Got one or two headlines. He said uh, what he thought, but that was how he was made. Uh, and we're all made with lots of assets and abilities and the other quirks of our characters, of our character. And that was one of his. You knew where you stood with them. Well, I like people who you know where you stand with. You, you probably heard the phrase hidden agendas. People are saying one thing to you and, and they're really meaning something else. And I'm pretty hopeless at picking up the hidden agenda. If you've got a hidden agenda, don't try it with me because I, I probably won't latch onto it at all and I'll think you mean what you're actually saying. Well, nor did the Duke have a hidden agenda. One of the lovely, we've read all sorts of tributes. One of the lovely tributes I read was from, I think, the first sea lord, the present first sea lord. Of course, he served in the war of the Duke and after. And he said this, he was a good naval officer, to the point, no flummery, good with people, said what he thought. And I've spoken to one or two people in these past few days who had met him on the Duke of Awards, Edinburgh's award scheme, and all said he was just a great chap to talk to, easy to talk to. Uh, and so, this is where I saw the connection with Thomas being important today as we think of him, we give thanks for all sorts of things he did. But one of them was this, his ability to speak out and say what he thought made him an ideal support and counterpart for the Queen, who inevitably has to be 
fairly full and mustn't put a foot wrong, and, and she doesn't. But she needs someone with her and she, to, to say what he thinks, put another side of things. And she has described him as her rock. So as we think of the Duke today and this coming, coming days, his funeral next Saturday, we give thanks for so many things he did, for his work for so long. He retired when he was 96, I think. Well, that's not bad, is it? Um, and unfailing support to the Queen, and that came from his ability to speak out. So, wonderful gospel today, and yet Thomas can make a connection with the events of our country at the moment. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, I invite you to stand and we'll say the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who fills us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our prayers. So let us pray. God of our lives, we give you thanks today for the long and full life of Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, for his strength of character and for his service to family, nation and commonwealth. We praise you for the many contributions he made to our national life, for his devotion to duty and the encouragement he gave to so many, especially to the young, May he rest in peace in your heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, be close to all who mourn today, especially the Queen and all members of the royal family. May they know the hope of your promises and the comfort of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray today as we continue our celebration of Easter for ourselves and each other that through believing as Thomas believed we may grow in faith and live our lives to their full. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who run businesses, large and small, which will reopen tomorrow. Pray for the continuing vaccination program and all who work in any way or are connected with the health service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask your love and grace to surround all who are ill in any way, in mind, body or spirit. Particularly this morning, we remember Brenda Dudding, Reverend Emma Duff, and all those for whom our prayers are particularly asked, and those whom we are concerned for and name in our hearts. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously. And we commend to your fatherly keeping all those who have died in recent days, particularly Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Audrey Doney, and Ivy McConaughey. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you, if you're able, to stand for the peace. And I know those who can't stand are standing, we're all standing, mentally and physically, Ruby, well done. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. We offer another and also with you. We offer one another and those looking in at home a sign of peace. So we come to the Eucharistic prayer in which we remember that last supper Jesus had with his friends. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son Jesus Christ to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms, 
and bring us with St. John and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honour and glory are yours O loving Father for ever and ever Amen Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen we break this bread to share in the body of christ though we are many we are one body. We all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be. And so I receive the bread this morning for myself and for everyone looking in online at home. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us. Preserve our bodies and souls unto everlasting life. Amen. And I receive the wine for us all, both in church and at home. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for us all. Preserve us unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God our Father, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, you have assured us, your children, of eternal life and in baptism have made us one with him. Deliver us from the death of sin and raise us to new life in your love, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our notices. The notices are in the view sheet. Please take it away with you. Important, particularly to mention our annual meeting, which is tomorrow night here in church at seven o'clock. We'll obviously have to be socially distanced, but we can cope with that uh, perfectly well. Please try to attend if you can. It's important, uh, and uh, the, the, as you go out on the right by the door, at the table by the sanitizer, as well as the plate, there are the reports and, some, and all the information of the annual meeting. Please take one away with you. Last Sunday, Emma told us that uh, Brenda Dudding had fallen and broken a hip. Well, I'm very pleased to tell you that um, she has had a hip replacement which has gone very well and she would got home yesterday afternoon uh, but clearly she'll have a period of 
convalescence as anyone does after a, a joint uh, replacement. Uh, and we keep her and her family, her large family, who I'm sure will be looking after her very well. But we keep, keep you, Brenda, I'm sure you're looking in very much in our prayers. And as the pew sheet says, in the course of last week, Emma, our priest, had a minor operation. That went very well. She's now recuperating in a, in a, a convalescent home, run by my <laughs> wife and me. Well, run by my wife. And she's doing very well indeed. She just needs to take things easy for a little while. So, we, uh, uh, no other notices? Heather, no, thank you. Uh, we come to um, our blessing and dismissal, and then we'll hear our final hymn, wonderful hymn, The Day of Resurrection, one of my uh, favorites, uh, and, uh, uh, and then we, we will, uh, I will distribute the communion to us. So, may God, who through the resurrection of Jesus has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith, and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.